Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about rheumatic fever. It is an acute disease which is following a streptococcal infection, namely a group A streptococcus beta hemolysing infection and it affects multiple organ systems. Now I first want to talk about the pathogenesis, what actually happens in the body after this infection. So Streptococcus pyogenes, the most famous of this group of agents causing the rheumatic fever, contains a highly antigenic protein, the M protein, in its cell wall. This leads to a cross-reaction with the body's own antigens because of this molecular mimicry that the antigens look very similar and the body can mismatch them. This leads to a cytokine production and a tissue destruction at different sites of the body, which also contain these antigens. This in turn leads to an inflammatory response. And by that also to complement attachment and to the recruitment of immune cells, mainly neutrophils and macrophages in the acute response. There is the question if there is a genetic predisposition to the development of rheumatic fever due to this molecular mimicry and that the antigens might look different in different bodies. There are specific symptoms in a specific combination for rheumatic fever and the diagnosis is done either by one major and two minor criteria or by two major criteria. There is a mnemonic for the major criteria which is Jones but the O is a heart and the J is for joints because in rheumatic fever often polyarthritis is seen where the joints appear hot and swollen and the heart is for carditis and valve destruction I will explain that um, a little bit later the N is for nodules which can be found subcutaneously usually as hard lumps under the skin erythema maginatum which is a red rash over the body. It's painless but it's quite visible and Sindemham chorea is the S in Jones and it's a flinching uncontrolled movement disorder which is uh, occurring when the pathogen affects the striatum. The minor criteria can be remembered with a mnemonic piece where P is for previous rheumatic fever E is for ECG with PR prolongation, A is for arthralgias, C is for elevated CRP and ESR, and E is for elevated temperature. So remember, one major and two minor or two major criteria are necessary for a clear diagnosis of rheumatic fever. Since this is a video in our pathology series, I also want to talk about the histology. Characteristic for rheumatic fever are Ashoff bodies. I think it's Ashoff, could be Askoff. You know what I mean. If not, you can read it on the poster. Those are foci of eosinophilic collagen surrounded T cells and plasma cells. They are pathognomonic, meaning that those, if you see those, then you can definitely say that it's rheumatic fever. There's also usually abundant cytoplasm and central round nuclei which form these caterpillar cells because within them the chromatin is arranged in a wavy ribbon-like uh, form. Also visible are Ashoff giant cells where Ashoff bodies fuse to form multinucleated cells. The next point I want to talk about is now the carditis and its morphology. So the whole heart is involved in this rheumatic heart disease and that's why we say it's a pancarditis. Now I want to go through the different layers of the heart. So in the endocardium we have the rheumatic endocarditis which also affects the heart valves where there is the deposition of the pathogen which leads then to a thrombi formation and um, yeah, destruction of the, of the layers of the valve and the uh, lining of the heart. In the myocardium we have the Ashoff myocarditis with these Ashoff bodies and sometimes Ashoff giant cells. And in the pericardium we have the bread and butter appearance of the pericarditis which is 
seen due to these uh, fibrinous depositions. Also, the vulvary leaflets get damaged, which is usually visible by mucoid edema, fibrinoid necrosis, and extensive cell proliferation. The treatment for rheumatic fever depends on its severity, but usually antibiotics are involved. The antibiotic of choice is penicillin, but in case of a penicillin allergy, also macrolides can be used. Immune suppressants like cortisone can be given. However, also acetyl salicylic acid can be given for the heart involvement to suppress the inflammation without the use of cortisone. Sometimes a uh, tonsillectomy might be necessary if the infection can be localized to the tonsils since it starts usually as a strep throat. I hope this was a clear overview to give you an idea and an image about rheumatic fever. The next video is gonna be about rheumatoid arthritis. Click in for that also. I hope it was helpful and I would be very happy if you would subscribe. Thank you very much.